Welcome to the second video in part two of our series on security and encryption. So far, we've talked about how passwords should be stored. We've talked about the difference between encrypting and hashing, and why passwords should be hashed, not encrypted. We also talked about salting the password with a random value before hashing to make it harder to guess. We talked about how users often choose passwords that aren't very secure, and we also talked about shadow passwords, storing the passwords in a separate table that can be kept more secure. We'll now talk about how hackers go about cracking passwords. So Alice has created a password on Bob's server. Despite Bob's best efforts, Eve has managed to get a hold of the hash of Alice's password. So how does Eve use that to get Alice's password? What she has to do is try hashing password after password after password until she gets one where the hashes match. She can go systematically trying every single possible thing Alice might have typed until she gets a matching hash. This is called the brute force method. If that sounds like a lot to go through, consider that if Alice's password is short, less than eight characters, Eve can brute force it in a reasonable amount of time. But as password length increases, the time for Eve to crack the password increases exponentially. There are a number of different techniques Eve can use to cut that job down. One way is to use what's called a dictionary attack. Eve has a list of passwords that can include things like a list of English words, as well as commonly used passwords. Here are the top 10 passwords revealed by the Adobe attack. As you can see, they're all pretty easy to guess. Not only that, but the 26th most common password on Adobe's site was monkey. Yes, monkey. People who picked that password probably thought they were being nice and random, but the fact is, the human brain doesn't work that way. It just cannot be relied on to think randomly. What they actually did was pick something silly, and as this list shows, silly isn't random. So Eve is going to put all of these passwords at the top of her list, but the dictionary will also include all English words, as well as common names for people and pets. It won't take her long at all to run through this list, and most passwords can probably be cracked using this method. If not, then Eve can use what's called a rule-based attack. This kind of attack is possible because people have been given very bad advice over the years about how to create secure passwords. For example, instead of a dictionary word, use the dictionary word plus a number. Put some of the letters in uppercase. If there's an E in the password, substitute it with a 3. Substitute an A with the at sign. Reverse the letters in the word. Duplicate some letters. And so on. The thing about this advice is that it makes creating, remembering, and typing in the password much more annoying for the user, but since hackers understand these rules, they can use them to easily crack the user's password. Eve can also do a hybrid attack. This is a combination of a dictionary attack and brute force. Since a lot of people use a dictionary word followed by a number, she can run a combination dictionary attack with numbers brute forced at the end of each word. A combinator attack is when Eve puts multiple dictionary words together. Essentially, it's like a brute force with the dictionary as one long alphabet. Two or three words together can be cracked this way. Four or more words can be very difficult if the words are randomly selected from a large enough list. If all of those fail, Eve can still do a mask attack. This is kind of like an intelligent brute force attack. In a traditional brute force attack, you have a character list and you try every single combination of those characters. In a mask attack, Eve uses the way people tend to create passwords to help her decide which ones to try first, such as an uppercase letter followed by a variable number of lowercase letters followed by a number of varying length. Unlike the other forms of attack though, this attack is not limited to ones that meet these varying structures. Those are simply the ones Eve is going to try first. Like the brute force attack, every possible password will be attempted at some point, so eventually the mask attack will get the password. It's just a question of how long. So Alice has no hope of creating a password that Eve will never get. What she wants to do is create a password that will take Eve so long to crack it won't matter. If it takes Eve several centuries to crack a password, Really, who cares? So Alice needs to keep several things in mind. The first 
is to never use the same password elsewhere. If Eve was able to get Alice's password on Adobe's website as a result of their security breach, and Alice also used that password for her email and even her online banking, guess what? Eve can easily access those as well without raising any red flags. Another thing to keep in mind is what makes a password secure. As we discussed earlier, trying to make a password more complicated by replacing the E's with 3's, for example, doesn't really help. Eve cracking the password is like finding a needle in the haystack. Making the needle complex and weird doesn't help you any. What you want to do is increase the size of the haystack, which is the number of passwords Eve will have to go through in order to find the right one. This XKCD comic illustrates the issue nicely. Above is an uncommon word mangled up the way a lot of people think you should. Each square represents one bit of entropy in the password, so this troubadour password, after all the mangling, ends up having 28 bits of entropy. If Eve can try a thousand passwords every second, she can get this password in three days. The password is hard to remember, but easy to crack. Using the above techniques, password crackers can get these mangled up passwords. You might think the password QEADZCWRSFVX1331 would be pretty safe. But it wasn't, when a stolen list of 16,000 password hashes was stolen by hackers. One online reporter, a beginner to password cracking, got most of these passwords in just a few hours, and all but the most difficult in a couple of days. And this included the QEADZCWRSFXV1331. How did he get it? Let me read out the password again, and let's look at our keyboards while I'm doing it. Q E A D Z C W R S F X V 1 3 3 1. Get it? This is called keyboard walking. And yes, hackers know about that too, and their rule based cracking tools use it. Here's the moral of the story. Any rule or technique or trick you can use to make a better password is a rule, trick, or technique a cracker can use to guess it more quickly. If you come up with a clever scheme for making a secure password, first assume that the hacker has figured out your scheme, and then evaluate how secure it is. The bottom part of the XKCD comic is four randomly chosen words. These each have 11 bits of entropy, meaning that they're chosen from a list of the 2048 most common English words. Since there are four words randomly chosen, this is 44 bits of entropy, and it'll take much longer to crack. Even if Eve knows Alice has used this method to create her password, Eve will have to go through about 65,000 times as many passwords to find this one as she would the Troubadour password. At a thousand guesses per second, it will take Eve five centuries to get through them all, hoping to find Alice's password at some point along the way. The top password failed because the haystack size was too small. But since this password can't be expressed any more compactly than 44 bits, its much larger haystack size makes it more secure. One quick thing to understand about these figures. This is how long it will take Eve to exhaust the search space. In other words, to go through every single possibility that fits the rule. This does not mean that it will take Eve 500 years to get the password. In fact, it's exactly as likely that you'll have to exhaust the entire search space to find it as it is for her to guess the password on the first try. If it takes Eve 500 years to go through the entire search space, she has a 50-50 chance of finding the password in 250 years. But we can do even better. We can get another bit per word and another four all total by using the 4096 most common words, still without getting into a lot of hard to remember words. We can also use this, not our dictionary word, as a combinator. Alice's password is Rough Milk Paint Battle 1. By putting a number on the end, she adds another three bits of entropy. Also, there's nothing stopping us from adding yet another word to it and even choosing a different number. So now our password is Rough Milk Paint Battle Production 6. So with that technique, we've increased our entropy to 51 bits. At a thousand guesses per second, it will now take Eve not 500 years, but 71,000 years to try every single password. When it comes to password entropy, a little goes a long way. So Alice can make passwords that are easy to remember with a mnemonic to help, but difficult for Eve to crack. Of course, the ultimate protection 
would be if Alice used a randomly generated password. Rough Milk Paint Battle Production 6 is 31 characters long, a randomly generated password of letters, numbers, and symbols that's only 10 characters long would have a far greater haystack size. And then there's the fact that a lot of websites stupidly limit the passwords you can type in by overall number of characters, as well as limiting the symbols you can type. Alice cannot use her Rough Milk Paint Battle 1 password on a website that limits passwords to 20 characters. There is absolutely no reason for this limitation whatsoever, and all it does is make everyone's password more guessable by all the eaves out there waiting to grab our data. But many websites do it. But even if you're limited to 12 alphanumeric characters, by randomly generating them, your password will have 71 bits of entropy, which will take Eve a hundred billion years to go through. But how is Alice going to remember a different random password for all the websites she visits? The only way is to use a good password manager. And by good, I generally mean not one built into most browsers. The one I use is LastPass, but there are many good ones available. What Alice does is create one good solid password, Rough Milk Paint Battle 1 should be fine, and use that to create her password vault. She can then import all her passwords she saved in all her browsers, and use it to randomly generate new passwords to the websites she visits. A good password manager will be multi-platform, running on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS, and will have plugins for all the major browsers, including Firefox, Chrome, IE, Safari, and Opera. It will also have a quality pseudo-random number generator capable of generating completely random passwords for each of her sites, and automatically enter them securely when Alice logs in. And probably most importantly, any good password manager will be TNO. For example, LastPass uses a standard called PBKDF2, Password-Based Key Derivation Function 2. Alice's password is salted and hashed with SHA-256, a very strong hashing algorithm that results in 256-bit or 32-byte hashes. Remember that a good hash is indistinguishable from random noise. That hash is then run through SHA-256 again, and then that hash is run through SHA-256 again, and so on a total of 5,000 times by default. The result is Alice's encryption key, which is used to decrypt her password vault. All of this is done client-side. The only thing that gets transferred over the internet is the encrypted vault, which is just a blob of pseudo-random noise. It cannot be read without Alice's encryption key, which can only be gained by running her master password through the key derivation process again. The LastPass people do not have her password, nor do they have her encryption key. If Eve tries to use her position with the NSA, the Network Snooping Association, to make LastPass turn over Alice's data, the only thing they can give her is the encrypted blob of pseudo-random noise. Eve demanding Alice's password or encryption key will do no good because they don't have it. Some password managers leave the synchronization up to the user so Alice would have to store her password vault on her Dropbox account or other cloud storage. Again, as long as TNO security is being used, this shouldn't be an issue. The only thing Dropbox could turn over to the NSA is an encrypted blob. Remember that the way to evaluate the strength of a password is to assume the hacker understands how you came up with it. If Alice were to tell Eve outright, I used my mother's maiden name followed by a number, Eve could get the password in no time. But if Alice says, I used four randomly selected words followed by a random digit, Eve knows she'll have a difficult time of it, and it's very unlikely she'll be able to crack the password. And if Alice says, I randomly generated my password with LastPass, Eve will know to just not bother trying. So now, Alice can do whatever she needs to keep her password secure. But all of this is dependent on the website not being stupid with her password. Unfortunately, Time has shown us that this is something we just cannot rely on. In the next video, we'll talk in more detail about how passwords should be secured on the server.